Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast for an emergency podcast. New, 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 new. El Boya Kenze, El Condor de los Andes, Ganador de la Vuelta a España, Giro de Italia, El León, Nairo Quintana <laughs> has returned to Team Movistar. <laughs> I had to check this news six times. I thought it was one of those fake Twitter accounts from the Rad Sport bubble saying that a piece, <laughs> Nairo Quintana has signed. For one year at Team yeah. Overstar, we're going to get into it, talk about why it makes sense or doesn't make sense after his uh, time in the desert, aka training in in kit in unmarked kit in Andorra. He trained like all the time, man, in Andorra the whole time he was uh, in the wilderness. So, the wilderness, so, how surprised were you, Benji, to see this? Um, I guess. I reached a point at the end of this year where I thought if no one's already picked him up at this point, no one will pick him up. I thought, and there are all these rumors, people from his camp saying, um, you know, he's he's signing for another world tour team and then it didn't happen. And I thought, well, it's been 18 months since he got sort of cut by Arkea. And at this point, I was so surprised that it actually happened in the end. So it's... It's crazy. I think it's related to him, uh, Movistar desperately needing points, desperately needing another GC contender, especially when, you know, they've lost a big rider like Jorgensen who could have fulfilled that role. So, um, yeah, incredible scenes. What you, what's your reaction, Benji, when you heard the news this morning? Well, first of all, I feel like before we dive into the Movistar reaction, I do want to mention the actual, uh, the actual like run up to this because it's been a long, long journey, right? The 2022 Tour de France, the tramadol usage for Nairo Quintana in there, ASO disqualifying him in that 2022 Tour de France, Nairo Quintana going to the Court of Arbitration, which is cause which he can then appeal that decision to disqualify him. And that failed, that, uh, that appeal. Now, Can I pause there? Sorry, in that chronology. I think yes. that was a huge mistake. I think he should have straight away said, took the tramadol, didn't mean to. It's not anti-doping. He should have ridden the Vuelta and normalized people to him riding straight away after the suspension. I think he made a mistake there. Sorry, continue. I see that. I see that. It's like, it's also not an anti-doping rule violation. It's important to note that. It's a, it's a UCI medical rule violation because was not allowed and is not allowed up until this moment due to rider safety reasons and some short context the first offense to that is a dq which quintana got the second offense would have been a five month suspension now he did it on two stages but seemingly he ended up not getting that five month suspension as in not officially <laughs> because he didn't ride for a while because this happened right at the moment where arkea was about to give him a contract extension right so I, I swear Quintana already announced it. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, I keep thinking, was, was that right, Benji? Was it right that he got blacklisted? Or is there something more to it in that there were teams offering maybe trying to get a, a bargain for this year and he's held out hoping he could get more money? I don't really know because like, surely Burgos would have given him 100 grand. And so he might, like, yeah. despite whatever, you know, they'll give him a hundred grand. You know, Medellin might give him, Medellin could give him a hundred grand, 150, 200 grand like Lopez. So I think he's held out for money mm -hmm. to go to a top team that takes him to a, could take him to the Tour de France. Um, I think it's difficult. Yeah, it's hard to know exactly what happened with that. I think it's, I think it would have been wrong that an, it is not, it will be. It is not an anti-doping rule violation. I think it would have been wrong if he was just unofficially blacklisted from World Tour after that. I get that. When it comes to you saying it will be, is that Tramadol will be banned as a doping substance from January 1st, 2024, so from the start of next season. But I, I'm like on the edge of it, what you're saying. I agree that he shouldn't be officially blacklisted, but I do understand that teams are like, are we... We won't take this guy. It's a bit, it's a bit sketchy because, yeah. from my perspective, I don't see the reason why he took tramadol if not for a better performance on the bike. Yeah, of course. Like there's been studies showing tramadol, you combine it with caffeine, you know, you're good to go. So, and I think that's you're right, Benji. It's 
say you're an Ineos, do you need to take that risk? Especially when, you know, he didn't admit it. He basically said, no, I didn't take it. So, well, come on, you twice. Um, And then just sort of dropped the appeal. That never went anywhere. So, um, yeah, maybe if you're one of those teams, you're like, that's not a risk worth taking. Maybe if your team Movistar, so now onto the signing, you know, because this is, uh, I guess, big news for them, a, a real bombshell. Jorgensen out. Uh, who else has left? A fair few points have left. Yeah, but Jorgensen is really the one that is leaving with the points. I feel like all the other riders were kind of like, yeah, like yeah. riders Oscar that didn't Rodriguez, you know. get the points, you know? Yeah. They are in the relegation battle, unfortunately, again. And I know you're thinking, how are you bringing this up again? Well, <laughs> this middle year, you can go from where they are, P12 right now, as Benji has in the notes, but it's P12 with not a big gap to the uh the relegation zone in 19th that's the difference it's not like yumbo you know just got this monster gap they've got one gc contender like would you maybe i'm underrating ruben guerrero benji but he won saudi tour and i don't remember seeing him for the rest of the year he's not someone you can say oh don't worry we'll go to the we'll go to um when Enric Mas is at Torino Adriatico, Ruben Guerrero has got Paranese covered for us. No, that's not what the position they're in. And I do feel like Enric Mas has also shown moments where he's not as consistent as he might have been before, to the point that you'd want someone to be there as backup just in case. So you want someone to replace the points that Jurgens is, is, is running away with, for example. And I feel like Nado Quintana perfectly fits that spot. We know that he can clean up some small French races, which... Still get a solid amount of points, yeah, but he yeah, can also yeah. like he can also get top tens in world tour races. I I don't know where his level is gonna be because he hasn't been on the bike for a while. Uh, as oh, he's in, been, no. He hasn't been racing in top yeah. level racing. Yeah, exactly. He's been training a lot with riders. That's for sure. We've seen it everywhere. But <laughs> everyone in Andorra is trained with him, <laughs> <laughs> except you. Except me. Yeah. <laughs> you drop him. I'm too fast. Yeah, I don't train with people without a world tour contract. The vulture <laughs> drops the condor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I think that's the point that he had eight. He had nine hundred points in his last year with Arkea. Um, whether they want to admit it or not, without Naira Quintana, they're not in World Tour right now. And you can see the state of Arkea Samzik without Naira Quintana in World Tour. It's not a World Tour level team. It's a bad team. It's not even the best Pro Conti team. Yeah, second best Pro Conti but team maybe. They are making a step forward towards next year, in my opinion, with likes of Demar and so forth. Great signing, of course. But this year without Quintana, terrible. And so, uh, just to read out some of the official statements, it's just Molestar are saying, you know, they're very happy for Quintana to return home to the the professional peloton uh, five years after he left because he went and took that uh, big money move to Arkea. And I think that worked out for them in the end. And yeah, 18 months out of top competition, he said... It's been a difficult year, uh, but it's been worth the pain. He's been riding in rain, in sun, sleepless nights. Uh, thanks to Movistar team, Telefonica and the team. This great great opportunity. It's a one-year contract, but that was kind of like Gaviria's one-year prove it, and then Gaviria got the extension. So I think if yeah. he starts, if he actually performs at all, he'll be getting extended. Um, I don't know what the money is, obviously. Uh, he didn't really have much leverage, so... It's not going to be his 2017 salary, but uh, I also don't think it's the minimum, uh, the minimum either. What Inzue says, Benji, that he will support Enric Mas in races. Why do they do this? <laughs> Why do they do this? It's not like uh, Yumbo or Ineos or UAE. Like UAE, I'm looking at, wow, where's the races they're going to be able to send all these guys for the opportunities? There are races... Like, these guys can do a split schedule. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of races for them to split it apart. I don't know, maybe it's to, like, prevent already discussions on social media about, oh, they're going to fight again, whatever. I think it's going to be no problem. There's plenty of races in the schedule, like you mentioned. He can start off with the French more schedule that Mus ain't going to do. Mus will write, like, some Spanish one-week race or something in, in yeah. February while, while Quintana can do Ovar or something. <laughs> yeah. And Tour de France, I don't know. I'd There's enough Grand Tours tour. for both. But Quintana's time trial for the Giro isn't exactly shiny either. Yeah. Oh, man, that would be bad. He probably hasn't <laughs> touched that TT bike in <laughs> two years. 
<laughs> he can't he can't do the Giro and and the mountain stages in the Giro aren't even good for him either. Yeah. I think did he win the Grappa stage back in the day, but yeah. Um he has if he's in any shape, it's a really good tour route for him. Bonnet to 2800 meters followed by Isola. Uh, he it's a really yeah, really but... good Tour de France route for him to top 10. To top 10, I agree. I agree. But he's not at the level to compete for pole or No, 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 top no. Top 5. But you get a top 10 from a guy on 500 grand yeah. and some top fives on stages, that's points. Yeah. And with the new points system, his 900 points from 2022, they are, you know, he's, he's over a 1,000 points scorer. Uh, so I think I would send him and Marcel's co-leaders, if he's, assuming he's in any semblance of shape, uh, to the Tour de France. I mean, he kind of was regressing a little bit already. So should we, um, are we being way too ambitious thinking that? Probably, uh, but I, I think it's a really, really, really good Tour de France route for him. And then, yeah, Welter after. I think there's no point, because as you said, neither are a podium favourite. Mm -hmm. There's no point saying, ah, oh, well, Enric will podium the Tour, then one of you has to do the Giro. I think you send both, and they just both do their own thing. And worst case scenario, you've got a loads of Colombian fans supporting your team, a bit of marketing going on in Colombia, so that's also an added thing, because the dude's Still very, very popular in Colombia. And like, I don't know, there's like two sides to it, I believe, since the political thing that he was, <laughs> he was in. <laughs> oh, no, he's super popular in Colombia. Okay. Uran's still the most popular, eh? No. No? Uran is no. not the most popular Colombian? Quintana's, Quintana's bigger than Uran. Come on. Uran's what do you mean, goat. come on? What's Uran one? You beat Jose Herrada in a fucking uphill sprint once. It, isn't he the most popular social media? What do you mean? Uran on Instagram is huge, man. Yeah, but that's different to Instagram's not necessarily real life. Dylan Gronavegan has like 600k followers and then like 80% of them are bots. Uran has his own movie coming out. <laughs> yeah, but Quintana could be like the mayor of Boyacá in five years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe real Colombian patriots, can you let us know? Um, who is the most famous or the most popular in, in Colombia? Uh, I'm, Lean, I'm Team Quintana, Benji's Team Uran. I'm Team Uran, um, always. So yeah, it's... I'm still surprised a little bit. Maybe we're hyping it up a bit too much, assuming he's just going to come straight into his level that he was in the Tour de France, where coincidentally he also got popped for using Tramadol on two of the key stages, the Grenoble stage, which, you know, so maybe it's wrong for me to say, ah, he'll be so good on Bonnet when... when he was good on a similar stage to Renault, <laughs> he was on Tramadol. Uh, which got him, got him sort of, yeah, those results are nulled. I don't know. And certainly he can't take Tramadol next year because it's an anti-doping rule violation, so you're gone. I don't know how those, those rules work in terms of a previous violation, but is there any other team that missed out here, Benji? There's a lot of teams that could have used someone like Quintana but didn't want to dip their feet into it, I feel like, and maybe that will cost them, but I also won't blame a team for not signing someone with a bit of a history. Yeah, like, does it work if... <sighs> Jayco and Quintana? No. I just, you just, you just can't see it. Or... Some dance in Quintana! <laughs> DSM and Quintana. Yeah. Remco cool Landa and Quintana. To be honest, Astana makes the most, a lot of sense. I yeah. think Astana's the other team where I thought he was going to go to because... They frankly do not, apart no offense to Luchenko, but they don't have any GC contender. So, yeah, I thought Astana, given that they're in the relegation zone, would have been one of the teams to go for it, but um, they didn't. Uh, so, yeah, prediction, Benji. I want... Does, uh, we'll do fast, fast question. Does Nara Quintana win a race next year? Yes. Yes. A race, just a random race. Yeah. True, he, they, they do. Most I do like Welter Asturias. Um, does Nairo Quintana top ten a Grand Tour next year? No, I agree. Does Nairo Quintana score a thousand UCI points next year? Seven hundred eighty-five. I'm taking, a, yeah, I'm taking just over one thousand. Oh no, actually, I'm under. <laughs> oh, I agree with you. The exact points I want to hear. Yeah, about 650. Okay. You, you went above 1,000 to 650, I man. Think, I, yeah, because I, 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 I was 
getting myself caught up in the hype. And then I was doing the being rationalist, like he's 33, 32 years old. Yeah. He was already re regressing, right? He, I, admittedly not on the best team, but he was already regressing. He's now taken 18 months and it'll be almost two years. No, not two. It'll be 18 months completely out of full-time competition. Question. If you're 18 months out of competition, are you 18 months out of the whereabouts system? I don't know how that works, whether you're still in that program. I think he'd have to declare now, and so now he goes straight back into it. And so by the first race in February, he's been in the system long enough if he was out of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, 18 months out of full-time competition, it's, it's difficult to see uh, him returning at the same level. That would be incredible. Um, so yeah, Luke's, I think Luke's the big skeptic. Um, I want to hear what Luca produces. Uh, Nairo's not point. Dutch enough. <laughs> he's like me, he's so short. He should um, lead out for Arvid de Klein. But yeah, you look at Movistar, they still, you look at their, their season Movistar. They were okay up to the end of the Giro, but the second half of the season, no World Tour wins. And really, in terms of GC, absolutely nothing. Uh, Enric obviously crashed a lot. So let us know what you think. But we wanted to do this emergency podcast. I didn't think it was going to happen. As the passage of time continued, I thought it's less and less likely because... Mate! Yeah? Did you know Aramburu got fourth at Quebec and third at Montreal? Not Dubsky's though. Fourth and third? Jesus Christ. The amount of points the man got in two days! 600! Did, did you see his lead out in Grand Piemonte? Let's not talk about that, but 600 <laughs> points in two race days! Really? In a, week, in, a weekend, in a weekend? In a weekend. I reckon Aaron brew has got to just turn himself into a climber. Like a climber. Well, like Ulysses. Because like Ulysses actually never really could sprint that fast. Uh, I reckon Aaron brew has got to, yeah, just keep keep doing that. Anyway, Benji had to shout out Aaron Brew. Maybe next year he'll win a race. Um, it's not the demo, it's coming. <laughs> he actually was good this year. But he just, <laughs> he just, uh, he needs Benji's tactical advice. So get on the Duolingo Spanish or Basque. 1,600 UCI points, man. No, no way. 1,548? Baron Brew. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> that's, gotta be the that's gotta be the most UCI points ever scored by someone not seen on television <laughs> for a season. <laughs> no, actually, that's not true. There'll be a GC contender who like backdoors top sevens. Like Quintana next year, perhaps. All right. Hopefully it works out for Movistar. Uh, hopefully there's not tears at the end. Um, but I think the, uh, the expectation is that maybe it's just a, a middling rider next year, Quintana, but it'll be some good marketing anyway, but maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be, uh, top five of the Tour de France. Who knows? But thanks for listening to the emergency podcast. Uh, unless there's some other, unless Chris Froome transfers teams, I don't think we have any other emergencies or unless there's a, the Saudi, uh, sovereign wealth fund creates a new league tomorrow. I think that'll be us for the next few days uh, as well. So thanks for listening as always, and we'll see you uh, in the next one. Ciao.